financial grown-up guide, Money for the Rest of Us, author David Stein shares his three best investing tips for financial grown-ups. You're listening to Financial Grown-Up with me, certified financial planner, Bobby Rebel, author of How to Be a Financial Grown-Up. And you know what? Being a grown-up is really hard, especially when it comes to money, but it's okay. We're going to get there together. I'm going to bring you one money story from a financial grown-up, one lesson, and then my take on how you can make it your own. We got this. Welcome, everyone. Very excited to bring you this interview with David Stein. His new book, Money for the Rest of Us, 10 Questions to Master Successful Investing, shares its title with his extremely popular podcast, where he delivers insightful and detailed monologues that frankly don't talk down to listeners the way some others do. David raises the bar when he talks about investing. If you can't keep up, no worries. He will encourage you to just listen to the podcast a few times, and you should. The same goes for the book. He encourages readers to reread a chapter if needed. The material is not basic, and you know what? We should all challenge ourselves a little even if you do have to rewind his podcast or reread a chapter in his book, it is well worth it. Step one, though, is to listen to this interview and maybe take notes and don't be afraid to listen twice. Here is David Stein. David Stein, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks, Bobby. It's great to be here. Congratulations on your new book titled so appropriately Money for the Rest of Us, because that's also the name of your podcast. And it's coming out just about now. By the way, your podcast, just so people have some context, your podcast, Money for the Rest of Us, has more than 10 million downloads in uh, 250 episodes. For people that don't know much about the podcasting space, he's huge. He's huge. So thanks for being here and congrats on the book. Tell us a little bit about the book before we get to uh, your tips. The book, really, it's a framework or really a, a checklist to help individuals. There's so many investment opportunities. How do you decide what to invest in? And so there's 10 questions that we can use as a filter to decide what to invest in. And I'll, I'll share a few of those in today's episode. But it's really to help individual investors master successful investing. That's the subtitle. And one way to do that, and as I've interviewed hedge fund managers, other managers professionally as an investment advisor, they have a discipline and they have a process. They're portfolio managers, and that's what we are as individuals. Portfolio managers allocate their assets among different opportunities, and we need a framework to be able to do that. We're going to talk more about the book in just a few minutes, but first I want to get to these three best investing tips for financial grownups that you brought with us. The first one is talking about how to know if a financial opportunity is investing, speculating, or gambling. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, sure. I find new investors often are attracted to whatever the latest craze is. And usually what is getting the most hype is a speculation. And the difference between an investment and a speculation is an investment has a positive expected return, typically because there's a cash flow component to it. There's dividends, there's interest, there's rent. So stocks are investment, bonds, real estate. A speculation is something where there's some disagreement about whether the return will be positive or negative because there isn't any income. Gold, cryptocurrencies, art, antiques, it's going to be worth whatever investors are willing to pay, or really speculators, down the road. And there isn't really a way to value it. Right. It's worth what people will pay. It's like if you go to those collectibles fairs or you shop for antiques with the idea that you're going to fix something up and sell it, it's only worth what someone will pay. And it's really just a market economy situation. Exactly. And speculation isn't bad, but what happens is if people put too much into speculation, because oftentimes the speculation is a zero-sum game. For every winner, there's a loser, because if it goes down in price, often with speculation, there's somebody there that might have shorted it, or if it was, a let's say, an options or a future situation, benefited from that. But we don't want our retirement based on speculations. We want the workhorse to be investments that generate cash flow, that generate dividends. And that's an important component. And it's just, it's an easy frame, but oftentimes because it's the speculations that get so much press, cryptocurrencies or online trading academies, or this often attracts others because it seems easy, but it's not quite that easy. Wait, I'm going to hold you there. I'm going to go off script just a little bit, David. I'm going to call you out on this. 
You've bought Bitcoin, though. I have. Yeah. And that's speculation, right? Well, the rule of thumb of the speculation is you go in assuming you're going to lose it all. So Bitcoin, there's an argument for it, perhaps scarcity. But if it turns out to be just a fad, it's going to plummet. It plummeted 20% in just a few days a week or so ago. And so the speculation, you kind of have to assume that you're going to lose it all, which is why I typically don't want to invest more than 10% of your assets in speculations. They can be nice diversifiers, but you see people that sell all their stuff and put it in cryptocurrency. They go overboard. We want the cash flow, and that helps us to essentially, we, with cash flow, dividends, you can make money even if the asset doesn't really go anywhere because you're, you're getting that income. Right. So we're deciding between, so investing, speculating, and then the final thing to figure out is, or is it gambling? And this is a real being honest with yourself in some cases. Well, ga yeah, gambling has a negative expected return. Yeah. You, and you do it for the entertainment value. And there are actually some securities that are gambling, particularly there's there's something called a binary option where you're you're interacting with the exchange, but the exchange is who you're trading with. There isn't another investor. And that's just like going to Vegas because just like casinos have to make money. If they had, if casinos had a negative expected return, they'd go out of business. And so if you're interacting with a casino, your expected return is negative because otherwise Vegas wouldn't exist. Now, we, some gambles are, if we don't have sufficient knowledge, what might be an investment for somebody else or, or speculation can be a gamble for us because of our personal behavior. Okay, so just to summarize, so investing tip number one is no, be able to identify if a financial opportunity is investing, speculating, or gambling, and you are recommending that you put obviously the majority in investing where you expect a positive return. Small part can go into speculating, and we're just going to stay away from gambling, right? Exactly. All right, let's go on to investing tip number two. Know who is on the other side of the trade. The idea behind this tip is to know who you're investing against. In other words, a stock, it's an exchange. There's a stock exchange, but there are other investors selling that stock. And, and Benjamin Graham, the, the classic value investor, he was investing in the late 40s. In the late 40s, most investors were individuals. So Graham could do all kinds of research. He could get an informational edge and know that a stock was undervalued and benefit from that. Now, most trading is done by algorithms or institutional investors. And so we need to be aware who we're trading with, which is why most of us just, just buy the market via index funds and ETFs. And if we want to buy individual stocks, know that we're competing against very, very smart investors. We do this with other asset categories. If you're buying a used car, you often want to know, or a property, why are they selling it? But because of financial assets, there's sometimes an intermediary such as an exchange, we don't stop to think, who is selling us that asset? What do they know? Do we have some type of informational insight that we can outsmart them so that we buy at a good price and can benefit from our foreknowledge? And the truth is, just to recap this, knowing who is on the other side of the trade, when it comes to stocks, very often, if we're an individual investor, the other person probably knows more. Number three of your investing tips is know what it takes to be successful, really focusing on the return drivers. Can you elaborate on that? Well, sure. I think with all assets, we need to understand what it takes to actually make money at it. And it gets a little bit back to investing versus speculating. But stocks, there are three drivers that determine stock returns. One is the dividend yield or the cash flow. The second is how is it growing over time? And the third is how are investors valuing those cash flows? Our stocks price very high in terms of, of the price to earnings ratio, how much investors are willing to pay for a dollar's worth of earnings. We don't typically break down investments that way, but we should. We should. We just can't buy something because we think it's going to go up in price. We have to be aware of the context. Oftentimes you hear investors think that, well, I'm just going to get the 9% return that the stock market has gotten historically. Well, that was, return was driven by 4% dividend yields. Now, dividend yields are 2%. So we have to lower our expectations and then consider, well, how are those dividends going to grow over time? Well, historically, since 1980, they've, they've grown about 5% per year. So a reasonable return on U.S. stocks is 7%, ignoring whether the valuations or whether investors pay more or less for those in the future. If price-to-earnings ratios drop, 
the returns can be even less than that. And so the takeaway is know what the return drivers are to determine what it will take for that particular investment to be successful. If it's individual stocks, then to be successful, you have to outsmart other investors. It isn't just the dividend yield or the growth. The stock has to grow faster than what everybody already assumes. And you have to know that it will grow faster. And this is such a great lesson and one of so many that are in your book, Money for the Rest of Us. I think a lot of the book, just transitioning into talking about that, is a lot about making decisions and the focus that you have on not being afraid to make mistakes. It's about the process. You quote a lot of smart people in the book, a lot of successful people in the book. For example, you quote um, Ray Dalio talking about um, not you're going to make mistakes, but the question is how to react when things actually happen. It's an interesting approach. Oh, yeah. And investing is about making mistakes. We all make mistakes. The key is to keep the mistakes small. And the other key, and this is from Annie Duke, who endorsed the book. She wrote the book, Thinking in Bets. She says we have to separate the decision process from the outcome. Sometimes I got an email from the other day from a guy who had invested and he's lost money in the last year. And he, he asked, am I doing something wrong? And I showed him, no, you're investing long term. Valuations went down. People were, weren't paying as much for stocks in the last year. And as a result, your portfolio went down, but you had a good process. And so we need to separate the process. And the process is, is to be able to identify investing versus speculating, know what return drivers are, and know who we're competing against as we trade. And it's interesting you mentioned trading because you actually tried to be a day trader at one point and you learned a lot in that process as well. Oh, I did. I used to research hedge funds and I would go visit commodity hedge fund managers and I thought, this can't be that hard. So I tried it myself and you quickly realize that trading is difficult because you're competing. I had a, a trader tell me, a commodities trader, you're not going to be successful unless you have some type of flow information in terms of understanding the order flows that are coming through and have some key insights. I just had educated guesses. I didn't do so well. And I learned. And, and that part of investing and learning to invest is experimenting, but you keep the experiments small and you learn and you move on and then keep your long-term investments in things you know work. As you were writing the book, what was going through your head in terms of the most important thing that was kind of bubbling to the surface, the most compelling thing that investors should know? To not get caught in the weeds, to, to focus on the basics. And I think a key component of that, so often I see investors go into a particular asset or speculation and have no idea what it's going to earn. We don't have to guess about investment returns. We can look at what drives those returns historically and come up with reasonable assumptions in the future. And we don't have to bury our head in the sand and just hope for the best. Otherwise, we tend to be too aggressive or we're just guessing. We can systematically look at the investment universe and have a fairly good idea of what the returns will be, either stocks bonds, real estate, or other asset classes, then build a diversified portfolio from there. All right, David, I know your book is available everywhere books are sold. Where else can people follow you, learn more about you, and so on? Money for the Rest of Us is the name of my podcast, and you can get more information at moneyfortherestofus.com. And your socials? Uh, the uh, Twitter, at J.D. Stein, and Instagram, Money for the Rest of Us, and I also have a YouTube channel, Money for the Rest of Us. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone, for taking the time to listen to David's Investing Strategies. I would love to hear your best investing tips. Please DM me on Instagram at BobbyRebel1 and on Twitter at BobbyRebel. And if you enjoy the show, please take a screenshot and share it on social media and tag me so I can thank you. Everyone, please pick up a copy of Money for the Rest of Us and subscribe to David Stein's podcast, Money for the Rest of Us, as well. It will make you smarter put in the effort. And thanks to David Stein for helping us all be financial grownups. Financial Grown Up with Bobby Rebel is edited and produced by Steve Stewart and is a BRK Media production.